So when people see families that have obesity, the assumption is, oh, what are they feeding those kids? Yeah. They're doing something wrong. Actually, do you know this? 79 to 90% of physicians in the United States have significant bias towards individuals that are heavier. Wait, are you saying that doctors don't understand obesity? Doctors? Doctors do not understand obesity. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. I want to show you this video of a Harvard associate professor and an actual doctor, an actual doctor stating that obesity is a brain disease. It's not your fault you're obese. It's genetics. It's just a brain disease. I know that sounds ridiculous. We're about to get into it. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe while we're watching. Now let's roll it. It's a brain disease. It is? It's a brain disease. And the brain tells us how much to eat and how much to store. Dr. Fatima Cody Stanford, an obesity doctor at Mass General Hospital, an associate professor at Harvard Medical School, says common beliefs about obesity are all wrong. It is your turn to get on that scale. And diet shows, like The Biggest Loser, you lost 128 pounds. are snookering people. If you diet, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you lose weight, right? For many of us, we can go on a diet, something like The Biggest Loser, right? You mm -hmm. go and you strict people, you make them work out for 10 hours a day, and then you feed them 500 calories. For most people, they will acutely lose weight. But 96% of those participants in The Biggest Loser regained their weight because their brain worked well. It was supposed to bring them back to store what they needed or what the brain thinks it needs. So willpower? Throw that out the window. My last patient that I saw today was a young woman who's 39 who struggles with severe obesity. She's been working out five to six times a week consistently. She's eating very little. Her brain is defending a certain set point. A set point, says Dr. Stanford, is a range of weight your brain is in charge of maintaining by controlling how much food you eat and how much of it you store. One theory is that it's an evolutionary survival mechanism that helped retain fat during famines. This is just, this is hard to believe for me that an actual doctor is suggesting this. Nowadays, there always seems to be some doctor, some scientist or intellectual with peer reviewed studies claiming that the way we've been doing things is all wrong and that no, this isn't your fault. We gotta blame somebody else. This all really just ties into taking accountability away from individuals and blaming it on somebody else. Do you see this big ass bowl of chips right here with ketchup on it? This isn't good. This is how you get fat. This is exactly how you get fat right here, eating this stuff every day. Look, and I'm someone that has struggled with weight my whole life, up, down, up, down. I love to eat. I love to eat. But fortunately for me, I like to work out as well. I'm very active in the gym and my eating discipline is something that I've been working on and actually starting to get the hang of. And I notice the results in my physique and I'm feeling a lot better as I'm cutting out the bad and unnecessary foods from my diet. To say that diet, willpower, exercise has nothing to do with being obese that's a far claim that i'm gonna need to see some some serious facts on because quite frankly it sounds like bs but let's continue so we had COVID. Mm -hmm. lots and lots of people gain weight do those people have a new set point that's higher now absolutely so when you have a chronic stressor and you get to a certain weight and maintain that weight for let's say at least three to six months then you recalibrate that set point to a different set point. I've always heard that it's the fast food, that it's the diet Cokes, that kind of thing, that is the instigator. Is that true? So I think we have to look at the different causes of obesity as a big pie. And that's one factor. But notice how I'm using this part of the pie, right? right? But the number one cause of obesity is genetics. That means if you are born to parents that have obesity, you have a 50 to 85% likelihood of having the disease yourself, even with optimal diet, exercise, sleep management, stress management. So when people see families that have obesity, the assumption is, oh, what are they feeding those kids? Yeah. They're doing something wrong. Actually, do you know this? 79 to 90% of physicians in the United States have significant bias towards individuals that are heavier. Now, doctors listening to me may say, oh, it's not me. 
hold your horses because has that patient come to you and told you, look, doc, I'm eating well. Look, doc, I'm exercising. And the doc says to them, are you sure? I don't believe that that's really what you're doing. Wait, are you saying that doctors don't understand obesity? Doctors? Doctors do not understand obesity. And one of her... <sighs> okay, I got a little common sense for the doctor here. Of course, if you are born to obese parents, you have a higher likelihood of being obese yourself because they have no self-control. They have no self-discipline when it comes to what they eat and, you know, how many calories they burn in a day. So why would they show you how to do things the right way if they don't even know how to do it themselves? And I think we have to be careful about calling obesity a disease. Is it a disease or is it a lifestyle choice? Diabetes is an actual genetic disease. Things of that nature. I don't think we can lump obesity in there with all of those other things. Obesity is a lifestyle choice. While it may be a percentage of people who have the fat gene, I would argue without studies, without research, without significant data put in front of me that the majority of people who are obese could be a lot smaller, could weigh a lot less if they changed their lifestyle choices. People who are obese for a long time have been eating too much and not working out enough, not burning enough calories and eating too much food. They are at a calorie surplus every day. That is how you become obese. I used to be obese. And I can tell you right now, the way I was eating was terrible. Cookies, cupcakes, pizza, burgers, fried food, anything I wanted, I was eating. I was addicted to food. But now that my diet has changed, now that I've changed my lifestyle, my weight is reflecting it. There's a huge push in society today to make people feel like victims and to make people think that they are where they are and it has nothing to do with them and their own personal choices. And the worst part is, is that it comes from people who are well educated, well studied and quite frankly should know better. You know, if I got to be the voice of reason, the voice of common sense to tell you that that's nonsense and that you need to take accountability of where you are, of where you are in life, where your weight is in life, where your finances are in life then that's what I'm going to do. And I'll do that to the cows come home because you aren't going to better yourself if you don't understand that you played a role in where you are. You played a role in how big you are. It's on you. All right, but that's it for the video, you guys. Let me know what you thought about this in the comments down below. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe on your way out the door. Till next time, you guys, I'm out of here. Peace.